Hello, I'm Nerox, bringing to you the second installment of The Chop. This time we'll go over the beat, Top Prospects by Ninth Wonder. I find it so epic, it is so good. And he makes it look simple. Listening to the beat, you would think it is just a simple 4 bar loop, but it is a bit more complex than that. But I am getting ahead of myself. As I said before, I would try to always do my own flip of the sample and show it at the end. Let's get this started. The tempo is 93 and the key of the beat is G minor. The song sampled is ultra high frequencies, we are on the right track. The sample is in B minor, so I pitched it down 4 semitones to get it to G minor. And of course, stretched it to fit the tempo. He builds a puzzle with this sample. Like I said before, it is mostly just a 4 bar loop throughout the beat, but he builds it in a complex way. This madman chopped it on the end counts, or half steps. For those who don't know, half steps are the counts in between your regular 1, 2, 3, 4. For example, when you bob your head counting the tempo, every time you raise your chin, that's where the end step is. So instead of doing 1, 2, you would be going 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. Ninth Wonder did 3 chops on the sample. So here on the first chop, I can count until 6 and a half. Second chop. And the third and final chop. Individually, they don't loop, but when you put them all together, you get a smooth sounding loop. If you add them, you would have 13.5. You need 16 to make it loop. So he repeats the third chop one more time. And then, to make a loop, he does the third chop again, but only playing it a half step. Before we go into arrangement and drum slash bass, my takeaways from analyzing the beat. Chopping different sections of the beat and gluing them together to make a loop is difficult. If you want to do it like Ninth Wonder did it here, it requires quite a bit of vision and creativity. The easiest way to do it is to just chop on the snares and the kick, or on the 2, 4, 8 and 16 counts. But that technique is more like lifting than chopping. Doing that way, you would be using a whole section to loop, instead of taking pieces and building your own loop. However, the goal is to make a great sounding loop, and I think Ninth Wonder's loop sounds better than what the original song was doing with the horns. Therefore, you shouldn't be scared of chopping however you find it necessary to make stuff sound good. His fix for chopping on the half step was just repeating the beginning of the third chop at the end to finish the 16 count. His fix was simple, but getting to that conclusion was probably not that simple. So I guess chop, move and glue however you feel it's necessary to get a smooth sounding loop. Now arrangement. The intro is simple, he played the first two beats of chop 1 8 times. Then it is just a 4 bar loop we just put together with the only difference being 3 drops he has throughout the beat. Example of one of the drops is right here after the intro, where he has a 1 beat drop in the beginning of the loop, where nothing is playing. The other two drops are just as simple, so if you're really interested, just check out the beat and emulate it. It is not complicated. Just cut that piece out of the loop and remove the drums. Talking about drums, let's do some drums. Like I mentioned on the last chop, 
I want to start doing the CarMac method when I'm working with samples. So here it is. I drag the drum samples into the grid and arrange them that way. Here's the kick pattern. Snare pattern. And I layer my hats with a shaker. Cut off a lot of the tail of the hat because I just want the hit sound because the shaker will be the tail. Quick knowledge bomb. The shaker is weak so I had to increase the sound drastically. When I first started producing I would just have cranked the gain knob until I liked the volume. However doing this can bring out a lot of fuzz out of the sound. To circumvent that you can stack gain boosters, so instead of using one booster of plus 9 dB, use three boosters of plus 3 dB. Now, a bit of mixing before I play my remake and my own flip. I sent all the chops to the same mixer. Split the sounds by sending that mixer exclusively to these two mixers. One of them I isolate the highs by filtering the lows with EQs and use maximus to boost the high frequencies because I wanted some more airiness out of the horns. On the other mixer I isolated the lows by filtering the highs with stack EQs. Also I made that track mono to keep the bass centered together with my drums. After that I leveled those two mixers to my liking and sent them exclusively to the same mixer track so I could glue them and mix them together. I used maximus again to balance the frequency spectrum to my liking. For mixing the drums I distorted the kick minimally and added a small reverb. And the snare with the rest of the perks were sent to the same reverb bus. I can do that because they are all high frequencies so they should fit really well on the same reverb. Before we end, a quick reminder of the importance of leveling. Your drums should be louder than your melodies for this style of music. Thank you for your support on my last video. It was really motivating. So subscribe for more producing content like this one and my own original content.